Welcome to the Weather Insights Tropics Briefing. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney, along with meteorologist Jeff Linder. We're recording this a little after 7 p.m. Central on Sunday night, September 8th. And we had a uh, podcast earlier this morning. And as expected, we had a flight go into the system. And so now we have potential tropical cyclone number six. But before we get to that, let's just briefly mention the two out in the southern Atlantic Basin. We have disturbance. Uh, number one, with a 70% chance of development over the next seven days, 60% in the next uh, couple of days. So that'll likely become our uh, next name storm, if if not before. But uh, right now, uh, 50% on disturbance two for the next seven days. But let's get to the potential tropical cyclone number six, because that's where the greatest area of interest is. And Jeff, from this morning, not really seeing, um, at least on the satellite, it, look, it still looks pretty disorganized. But there are some some things that are that we're, that we're showing, at least as far as the data goes, that shows this thing is becoming a little more organized. Particularly the wind speed, we're seeing some pretty good winds out there now, 45, 50 miles per hour, and um, this um, will likely be uh, Francine in the next day or so, and uh, now. National Hurricane Center thinking this is going to be a hurricane by Wednesday, midday, early afternoon, somewhere around that time frame. Uh, tropical storm watch is now in effect from Corpus Christi down to uh, Tampico or so, middle of the Mexican coast there. As that system, as expected, is going to be moving northwest, slowly turning to the north, and then eventually to the northeast. And as we talked about this morning as well, with that angle approaching the uh, Texas coastline, tough to determine exactly rainfall amounts and those type of things. Um, those will have a better idea as the days unfold. But for right now, uh, this is what the National Hurricane Center is giving us, that we do expect this to be a tropical storm and eventually become a hurricane. And then um, <clears throat> we can look at the next one there. The, this is the track, the mean track still pretty much where it was this morning, making landfall somewhere between Houston and Beaumont. But as you can see, spaghetti models there um, can be anywhere from the middle of the Texas coast over to around Lake Charles area. We'll just have to see what what it actually, um, what, what actually verifies from that. And then um, as far as that, you know, it, I guess the, the main change from this morning, Jeff, is that this is now a potential tropical cyclone number six. And, um, you know, we do expect to to probably see our next hurricane from this storm. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see how things unfold here in the next couple of days. Um, just, you know, want to be, there's a couple of things here I want to touch on. One is yeah. if you look at the, the wind field down here in the Southern Gulf of Mexico, you can see it's not very symmetric. We have a lot of, stronger winds here on the western side of this this is a combination of the trough and the and that front that came down and we're accelerating the wind speeds down here in the western gulf um maybe a little bit of a barrier jet uh, that forms between the higher terrain of eastern mexico and, and also over the warm waters of the western gulf and so that's what's really getting these winds going <clears throat> on the west side of a very elongated and poorly defined circulation and it's going to take time uh, for this to really define uh, how it's going to develop and, and come kind of northward. And that's really important um, where that center forms. If that center forms a little bit further over here on the west or on the west side of this uh, track cone, you know, you can see this come up more towards the Matagorda Bay area. Um, that would be a much more significant impact event for us here in southeast Texas. If the center were to form further to the east and over here on the east side of this, you could see landfall somewhere over in south central Louisiana, which would be virtually a non-event here for coastal southeast Texas, but obviously a much more significant impact over here in south central Louisiana. And so we talk about this a lot, but in this case, it really, really, really is important on where that actual center forms up and gets going and and the models are you know kind of all over the place with it down here and because it's a yeah. very complex evolution of how this is going to transpire down there and saw the model guidance again kind of clustering around the texas louisiana border 
uh, really between about High Island and, and the Lake Charles area. That matches with the National Hurricane Center forecast track very well, uh, which is pretty much the consensus track. And you can see there hasn't been a lot of change with the consensus over the last uh, 24 hours. So in the consensus is just the average of all the models put together in the Hurricane Center is very close to that. Uh, one thing I will say is the GFS, the European, and the UK MET models are much further east. They're much stronger. They're much further east. They have a, a much more significant hurricane approaching the southwest or south central Louisiana coast as we get into Wednesday. And we're going to have to keep an eye on that. They could be on something here. Um, those big global models are, are kind of what's, what's, what's driving that a little bit. What's interesting is our hurricane models, our regional hurricane models, which tend to be a little aggressive, uh, aren't really showing that amount of intensification um, like some of the big global models are. But if you're over here, South Central Louisiana, Southwest Louisiana, I would definitely be keeping my eye uh, on this system very, very closely because if there is going to probably be any sort of track shifts, uh, the more likely scenario is it shifts more toward the east in a stronger type situation, a stronger type storm. And I, I definitely wouldn't rule out, um, you know, a, a, at least a Category 1 hurricane. That's that's the forecast right now. Yeah. But if it goes a little bit further off to the east here, we could we could be looking at something a little bit stronger, for, um, a little bit stronger than that. So, you know, you definitely need to be paying attention over here in Louisiana for this. It's, it's not... Uh, you know, just a Texas, you know, for Texas, this may end up being more of a brush along the coast. It kind of brushes along the coast. We get some impacts along the coast. Yeah. More direct. Either, either way, uh, Louisiana's on the convective side. So. Yeah, they'll be on the, the dirty side of it, yep. if you will. Um, yep. and, and we do have some dry air in Texas that's going to be trying mm -hmm. to wrap into this. And so I think when you look at it, for us here, and I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, because we just talked about the center, and it's really important where the center forms. Mm -hmm. But for here, we're looking okay. You know, I I, I think minus the extreme coastal locations, um, you know, that dryer is going to really limit some of the impacts as we get further inland. Yeah. Uh, this is the intensification or the intensity guidance, um, kind of all over the place. You know, the yeah. hurricane centers up here. Uh, bringing it in around a 75, 80 mile an hour hurricane. Um, again, that's nothing this, to, to, to disregard. Um, that's very similar to what Barrow was. So, you know, Beaumont, Port Arthur, Sabine Pass, Lake Charles, Cameron, Louisiana, those areas, uh, you need to be paying attention to this. You need to have your hurricane plan ready to go yep. and be ready to enact that hurricane plan tomorrow um, as we start to get watches and warnings further up the Texas coast. All right, so we'll talk a little bit about the impacts now. Uh, first with the wind, this is the arrival of the tropical storm force winds at the 40 mile an hour winds. Um, you can see the probabilities here, uh, anywhere from along the Texas coast, 30 to 40% uh, all the way along the coast. These are obviously going to go up as the storm gets closer, but you can see down here in the mid coast uh, as early as uh, Tuesday evening, and then Wednesday morning here on the upper coast and then Wednesday afternoon here into southwest, south central Louisiana. Don't want to forget about the folks down here on the lower Texas coast, the Brownsville, South Padre Island. You could get brushed with tropical storm force winds as we get into Tuesday morning. So at about 24 hours-ish, 24 to 36 hours from now. And that's why we'll probably see those watches extended up the coast. Yep. 20, the other thing... The other thing is going to be the potential for storm surge. Mm -hmm. um, we're starting to get some uh, values now that we have a forecast track from the National Hurricane Center. And you can kind of see the, the center of the storm coming up in the direction here of Beaumont, Port Arthur, Sabine Pass. And you can see all the colors here a little bit light, brighter in Louisiana. So that's that onshore push, that wind coming from the south off the Gulf of Mexico that's gonna push that surge into these very vulnerable areas of South Central and Southwest Louisiana. It's a very storm surge prone area. Everything you see here in yellow is three feet above normally dry, dry ground. Everything you see in orange is six feet above normally dry ground. So this is this is going to be some inundation. You know, we're talking around here, Cameron, Takashi Parish, Sabine Pass right here. We'll go over and take a closer look at the Galveston area. Right now, possibly up to three feet of inundation above ground level. That's a little bit less than what we saw with barrel. So probably impacts a bit, a little bit less than what we saw with barrel. 
but this is going to be very contingent on the track of the the surface center as it moves across as it moves across the northwest gulf if the, if the center is way out here these values up here on the upper coast are going to be a little bit lower if the, if the surface center comes up close to the coast these values could be a little bit higher and even up here in galveston bay uh we'll probably get a little bit of of, of uh, storm surge and inundation so we don't have any watches and warnings yet on the storm surge those will likely be coming tomorrow with storm surge watches um, with yep. this type of inundation we're expecting up here a few days out. um and, and and don't sleep on this. We already have right. elevated tides with the northeast winds going on down here. Um, like I said, I don't think this is barrel level right now on the upper Texas coast, um, but we are getting into some values further to the east that are, are much more concerning. We start getting those six feet uh, above ground level elevations. And then lastly, the rainfall forecast, no big changes here. Again, very tight gradient, yep. highly dependent on the track. Um, inland areas, you may not see much. You know, Northwest Harris County, Katy, Conroe, uh, out towards Sealy, I had some questions about, hey, what about Brenham? What about Sealy? I don't know if you're going to see a whole lot. You may not even see any rain. Um, but again, if that track were to shift a little bit to the left, uh, that would bring some of these heavier rain here in the Gulf of Mexico further inland. Right now, I really think it's right along the immediate coast. And the timing for this, let's talk about timing for a minute. Tomorrow's a great day. It's going to be fine for any preparations that need to happen. Yep. Most of Tuesday's probably going to be okay, especially the morning hours, but we will start to see some banding and squalls coming in on Tuesday afternoon and evening. And it's really going to be Wednesday um, that's going to be the day as this kind of crosses over our coastal waters. Um, and we'll just have to really fine tune those impacts as we go over the next couple of days. But I'd be ready for Wednesday. And then this gets on out of here. This isn't anything that's going to stall and slow mm -hmm. down and meander. This is, is through here, making landfall uh, Wednesday evening. And by Thursday is up in the mid Mississippi Valley and, and on out. So no concerns about any flooding or anything like that lingering around for days and days and days. This is going to be kind of a very similar to barrel, a quick hit and in and out. Yeah. And uh, taking the dry air with it, it will be uh, uh, it'll leave some humidity and moisture behind. But uh, yeah, in and in and out of here. So uh, we will have another update tomorrow morning and likely have a couple for the next few days. So be sure that you are subscribed to the Weather Insights YouTube channel. Make sure you turn on those notifications and share this with friends and family so that you can stay in touch with us and know what is going on and have the latest information about the tropics. Jeff, thank you very much.